Hello again, and welcome back. Artificial intelligence continues to grow in momentum, and Google's TensorFlow framework is at the center of ongoing innovation, and web-based editors like Jupyter Notebooks make it a breeze to get proof of concepts up and running in no time at all. But why is TensorFlow so quickly becoming the de facto framework for artificial intelligence? A big part of its success is related to the list of prominent algorithms supported and built in to its API. Among those include linear regression, classification, deep learning classification, deep learning wipe and deep, booster tree regression, and booster tree classifications. And there's always additional algorithms being added as we go along. Another big piece is its ease of implementation. Okay, so before we get started with a practical example for using TensorFlow, you'll need to download and install the respective version along with any missing dependencies for your operating system distribution. For the purposes of this demo, I'll be leveraging Anaconda and Jupyter Notebooks. I'll also be using the Spider IDE. If you're not already familiar with Jupyter Notebooks, it's simply a Python notebook viewer that allows you to write dynamic visual Python applications for data science and machine learning. If you haven't already set up an Anaconda, TensorFlow, and Jupyter Notebook environment, you'll want to proceed to doing that at this time, as I will not be going through this detailed walkthrough of installation, but here's generally what that would look like. You'd start by installing Anaconda, then you could create a .ymal file to install TensorFlow and its dependencies along with the Jupyter Notebook environment. If you're targeting to run TensorFlow on the CPU, which is what I'm targeting on my system, the YML file would look something like this. Note that the file is case sensitive. Once you have this YML created, we can simply run it using bash expressions in our terminal. I've already run through the setup process for the environment we'll be using here to allow us to get straight into using TensorFlow and Jupyter Notebooks. So let's review the directories to make sure we've got all we need to proceed. We'll start by first finding where our Anaconda instance is running by using the which anaconda command in our terminal. Now let's cd into anaconda3 directory and make sure ipython, Jupyter, and TensorFlow are present. Great! Now I personally like to use spider ID or integrated development environment in anaconda to write all my Python applications. So let's launch that. I mentioned the big reason for TensorFlow adoption is its ease of implementation. For example, all that is needed for a quick implementation is to import TensorFlow into our application with import TensorFlow STF, then define a few variables as so. In these two expressions, we create a placeholder node and we pass in the data type that will be adding numbers. So we can use floating point data type, which is tf.float32. We also need to give this node a name. This name will show up when we look at the graphical visualization of our model. In the expression above, the name we've chosen is node var underscore one for a variable one. We name this model by passing in a parameter called name with value equal to var underscore one and do the same for our second variable var underscore two. To add a computation between these two variables, we can define the computational graph we want to perform. In this case, let's define a multiply computation as follows. In the expression above, the tf.multiply operation defines the node. We then pass the var underscore one and var underscore two nodes to multiply the nodes. It tells TensorFlow to link those two nodes in a computational graph, so we are asking it to pull the value from x and y and multiply the results. In this case, we give the multiplication node the name multiply. To execute operations in the graph, we have to create a session. 
In TensorFlow, it's done by the tf.session function. Now that we have a session, we can ask the session to run operations on our computational graph by calling session. To run the computation, we need to use run. When the addition operation runs, it is going to see that it needs to grab the values from var underscore one and var underscore two nodes. So we also need to feed it values for var underscore one and var underscore two. We can do that by supplying a parameter called feed underscore dick. We pass the value one, two, three, four, five for var underscore one and six, seven, eight, 9, 10 for var underscore 2. We print the results with the print function while passing results. We should see values that multiply respective numerical representations for var underscore 1 and var underscore 2. To recap, practitioners use TensorFlow because it's easy to deploy at scale. It's built to work in the cloud or on mobile devices like iOS and Android. TensorFlow works in a session. Each session is defined by a graph with different computations. We've gone through a simple example of multiplying two numbers. Now let's try an example using Jupyter Notebooks. Launch Jupyter Notebook using the Jupyter Notebook command in your terminal. Your browser should open automatically, but if it doesn't, copy and paste a URL provided by the terminal. The URL should read http colon forward slash forward slash localhost colon 8888. Inside the Jupyter Notebook, you can see all the files inside the working directory. To create a new notebook, you simply click on New and Python 3. The new notebook will automatically be saved inside the working directory it's been opened from. Inside the notebook, you can simply import TensorFlow with the TF alias and click to run. A new cell is created below. Let's write our first TensorFlow application in a Jupyter notebook. Like most first applications, Hello World application is a typical one to start with. And here's the expression to define that. Now, if we wanted to have a similar example, like the one we've done in the Spider IDE, we could simply run through the following steps. We can add each line by line, finally hitting run at the very end. Once we've gotten to the last line, we could see that our computation has worked as expected. A new TensorFlow has been created and you've run your first TensorFlow application in a Jupyter Notebook. At this point, you can proceed to delete the file named untitled.ipynb inside Jupyter. There are two ways to close Jupyter. The first way is directly from the notebook. The second way is by using the terminal or Anaconda prompt. From the main panel of the Jupyter Notebook, simply click on Logout you are redirected to the logout page. From the terminal or anaconda prompt, simply press Control C twice. The first time you hit Control C, you're asked to confirm you want to shut down the notebook. Repeat Control C to confirm. You have successfully logged out. I hope you've enjoyed this video. As always, thank you very much for your time, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.